maybe they should take a test first, and then that will determine whether or not they should be able to advance, you know, without taking the class. I feel like that would be very beneficial to a lot of people here on campus who have a hands-on experience in whatever their field is so they wouldn't waste their time or the money being in pointless classes. It could be beneficial, maybe. I'm not sure about the long run because, I mean, there are students out there that can go sit in a classroom and not do anything but learn the material just by going to class. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, there are students that already know everything, whether they went to a high school that already taught those classes and maybe they weren't offered for college degree. Mm -hmm. And so I think they should be able to go and test out of those things and be able to have a degree plan that benefits them. I think that's a great idea, um, especially for somebody, for that example, the military. If they already have that experience, like why go through them basic courses if you already know the information? Like why go through the same stuff? Basically you've taken two steps back mm -hmm. to get ahead. So I really think that's a great idea. Hello, welcome back to the President's Table. My name is Dan Jones, the President of Texas A&M University Commerce, joined by my student co-host Chris Manguel. And in our final segment tonight, we're going to talk about an exciting new and highly innovative new uh, degree program that's being conceived and soon to be launched in the College of Education and Human Services. Our guests for this segment are Dr. Uh, Rusty Waller, a.k.a. the dog, the dog. <laughs> <laughs> who's the department head, and Dr. Brent Mangus, the dean of the College of Education and Human Services. And let me give a little context for our conversation here. This really started, I guess, about a year or so ago when the governor uh, issued a challenge. He said it's time for the state to come up with a $10,000 degree. And I think uh, I had the same reaction that a lot of uh, university presidents around the state had, which is, oh, come on, you got to be kidding. How could, you know, because, as you know, even a... Um, a low-cost degree in Texas is going to run thirty-five or forty thousand, and it kind of goes up from there if you do it in the traditional way. Well, <clears throat> you guys took the challenge, and although we're still you know, crunching numbers here, I think uh, what we're coming up with is not so much that we get right to ten thousand dollar degree on, on to the penny, but rather that we be sensitive to the needs of students and families for a high quality low cost degree option which doesn't make them learn a bunch of stuff they already know I guess just kind of in a nutshell that that's Absolutely. the concept behind what you all are working on so let me ask if you can talk a little bit about how we can come up with a degree that controls cost in a in a very serious way not just trim a little bit around the edges but really comes up with a uh, a price point that students and families can afford without sacrificing any of the quality Brent, let me start with you. Thank you. Um, I, I think one of the most important things to think about in this situation is um, how do we maximize everyone's intellectual capacity, the things they've learned, the things they've experienced over a long period of time, and try to give them some sort of a, a, a credit or, or do justice for, for those, those experiences and that knowledge that they already have. Um, it, it's sometimes frustrating to watch people sit in a class for 15 weeks mm -hmm. when they really don't need to sit in that class. They, they have that, maybe they're a returning student and they, they've already had that experience. They've had that, that knowledge and those experiences. And they just don't really need to sit in a class and learn right. that over and over again. So our focus is, is to take those things that people already know that they have, they have skills in, they have competencies to be able to do um, and, and maximize those things to allow them to, to skip over that part of their basic education, get them to an advanced leadership category mm -hmm. where we can, we can really refine their leadership experience, their leadership capabilities, and, and provide them the skills they need to go out, take the things they know, and then, and then apply those things in a leadership capacity right. in, in a business or school or wherever it might right. be. Right, get on with their lives. Mm -hmm. Rusty, wh wh how have you shaped that concept? Well, what I see in that concept is uh, moving somewhat beyond just simple regurgitation of information, moving into the idea of intense engagement mm -hmm. in the field of education to reach beyond just the, the local area, but to, to reach on an international basis through leveraging the resources that we have, the substantial resources we have in digital learning. And we believe that that's, that's very possible. A lot of the cost that, that one 
uh, encounters in an educational program certainly relates to tuition, but it also relates to textbooks. Right. And the other issues that are there, and through the utilization of um, e-textbooks, which are substantially less than digital tech, uh, than, than print textbooks, we can save some costs there and yet not lower the standard at all through the utilization of such things as lifelong portfolios to engage students in learning communities. We really empower learning well beyond just the traditional method. And those, those, the utilization of those sorts of resources is really very cost effective, mm -hmm. amazingly as, enough. As it turns very, out. Very cost effective. Yeah. It turns out you can actually improve learning outcomes, increase student engagement, and control costs all at the same time if you just sort of leverage all of these resources uh, toward a common goal. Mm -hmm. Chris, how does this sound to you as a student? Um, I just wanted to ask a question to Rusty. So as far as the, the 10,000 number, mm -hmm. as those points you just listed, that w is that going to be in the same ball figure or were you thinking about 15 or 20? <laughs> I, we, I have a crystal ball at home. <laughs> 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 it work. Um, the goal certainly was to respond to the call of the government. Okay. But, but we don't know exactly what the final figure will be, but we do know that there are ways to save substantial resources. We, we mentioned just a moment ago the idea of textbooks, uh, example of uh, using textbooks where students pay only for what they use in a textbook versus buying the whole textbook. In mm -hmm. one of our master's programs lowered the cost from about twelve to $1,500 for the program to under $300 for all of the textbooks for the program. Okay. Those are, and and we, those don't diminish in the least from the quality of resources that are available to students. Actually, they improve learning. Then the, the concept of broad engagement, we, we're engaged <laughs> anymore in a, in a very social world where we have access to experts that we never dreamed we would have ex access to. Uh, I laugh, I, I use a lot of YouTube, and I get emails <laughs> from all over the world. Got one from Australia that said, I'm 99.9% .9 certain that this is a better discussion than what I've hasted. <laughs> <laughs> but but those, sorts of, those sorts of resources are, are, are free. Yeah, They're, exactly. they're free, and they're very powerful. You know, and I guess we should add a caveat here that this is probably not the program for an 18-year-old high school mm -hmm. graduate who's just beginning his exactly. or her academic journey. So, exactly. Chris, as, as a 2007 graduate of Commerce High School, mm -hmm. this is probably not the direction you would have taken. On the other mm -hmm. hand, in the state of Texas, there are more than 3 million people who have some college credit and no degree. Yeah. But, but, and they may have, uh, they may be veterans, they may have had military training, Correct. they may have had uh, uh, professional training. And to, to make those people sit down and take college algebra over again is probably a waste mm -hmm. of their time and their money mm -hmm. and our resources. Yeah. So uh, for, that, for that population, certainly the state of Texas will benefit from having more credentialed mm -hmm. people in the workforce. This could be just the solution. Well, it's a great step forward, and I applaud you for your efforts, and uh, keep it up. And Thank we're looking you. for yeah, great nice things uh, uh, in, yeah. in, the, in the months and years ahead. Well, that wraps it up for uh, tonight's presentation of the President's Table. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you back here again next month.